Mushrooms are not a plant. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I am the Mushroom King Brian, and she is the Mushroom Queen Jessica. No, I'm not. Peef is the Mushroom Prince Bear. No, he's not. He is a fun guy. Wow. You got it? So a mushroom is not... Mushroom is not a plant. <laughs> a mushroom is, in fact, a fungi. Just like Peef. Yes. Thank you uh, to everyone. We put it out there a little while ago that we wanted to do a mushroom powder video and we got inundated with questions and comments and people begging that we actually do make a video about it. So that is what this is. All right, so of course I have my clipboard and I've organized all of your questions into certain order that makes the most sense and has the best flow because that's how I roll. So the first question is, what is mushroom powder? Hit it. Mushroom powder is nothing more than just ground up dried mushrooms. You can really use any kind of dried mushroom that you want to create mushroom powder, but today we are going to be using three different kinds, including portabella, porcini, and chanterelles. When I first got started making my own mushroom powder at home, I used this, which of course is a coffee grinder, but we don't use it for coffee. We use it to grind up spices and herbs and all that kind of fun stuff. But as a reminder, if you do use this for spices and herbs, don't use it for coffee and vice versa, because then you end up with getting a uh, coffee that tastes like weird random herbs and spices. Or if you go the other way, you get spices and herbs that end up tasting like coffee. But since we're using this for mushrooms, uh, it was only there to make small little batches that I would use in like the different recipes that I use. But I will show you a demonstration of how to use this anyway. I opened up a bag of the porcini mushrooms and I'm just going to put some into there. Obviously this container does not have a lot of space. So you kind of just want to fill it up as best you can. Uh, maybe not fill it up all the way to the top, but just put it in enough until you think you got a good amount of what you actually need. I would say that's probably a good amount right there. Put the lid on and blitz away. Now, when dealing with mushroom powder, here is issue number one that you are going to run into when making it yourself. And that is, you're gonna get powder everywhere. It's just a question of how much, because you gotta be very delicate when opening any of the containers that are there. But as you will see, there will be some powder that will get out. It's okay, it's perfectly fine. And there you go. Mushroom powder, perfectly ground up mushroom powder from our coffee grinder. For this next bit though, I have brought in my assistant. Hello, assistant. Uh, so I like doing things in an efficient manner. Before, whenever I would make my own mushroom powder, I could use the small little batches for the little things that I would use it for. But now I find myself using mushroom powder in a lot more things, especially in things like my burgers that I uh, gave out the recipe for a few weeks ago. So we've been making a lot more of it. So let's bring in the Vitamix now to do a bulk version of it. We are going to put in all all of the portobello mushrooms because those are actually like the really, really big mushrooms. And just pour all three bags into the Vitamix and uh, go ahead and blitz that into a fine powder. Also, make sure that your Vitamix is completely and totally dry. If there is liquid, water, anything inside of there, uh, it's just gonna gum up like everything with these. So just, you have been warned. So, as you can see there, yes, some of the stuff did come out of the top. It's, it's, it's gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. All right, assistant, show us what's inside. Hey, look, it's a mushroom cloud.
So there you have it. Really, really straightforward thing. It is very easy to make mushroom powder and you can have a bunch of different mushrooms that you can choose from to make it. All in all, a really fantastic thing. And I am really glad that you guys suggested we make this video. So without further ado though, whoa, without- whoa, 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 whoa. You're gonna like close the video out? Yeah, why wouldn't I? No, 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 I have like a clipboard of questions. Oh, okay, fine, get to them. <laughs> All right, the first question is, what can I do with mushroom powder? Pretty much anything you want. You can put it into soups and stews. I have it in my burger recipe, obviously. Uh, and any other sort of thing where you want to add in an, an umami flavor, but not really add in a mushroom flavor or a mushroom texture. Somebody else asked what your favorite uses are for it. Soups, stews, burgers, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, you can put it directly onto things or you can put it into, into smoothies if you don't want to, uh, don't add in a lot, obviously, so you don't wanna have just like a straightforward mushroom smoothie. But uh, yeah, you can pretty much use it wherever you want to, uh, just to, to kind of put mushrooms into a dish. So also in the blog post that's linked in the description below, I will link to every single recipe that you've ever used your mushroom powder in. I think there's like three or four recipes your chili, your black bean burgers, and uh, oh, the refried pinto beans. So check out that blog post if you want some recipes that actually use mushroom powder. But the next question is, what are the health benefits? There are a lot of different health benefits to eating mushrooms. Mainly they are completely and totally packed with uh, vitamins and minerals and other good healthy things. Not to mention, uh, they are very low in calorie, very low in fat, very, very low in cholesterol. And uh, they are just an all around great food to have because they're mainly water and an indigestible substance known as chitin. So I actually have found some good articles because I was not a believer in mushrooms to begin with. When we first started this, I was like, I read that mushrooms were like magic and all had all these, you know, phytonutrients and all this good stuff and are going to cure all these diseases and all kinds of stuff. Magical. And I hated mushrooms. So I did a lot of reading about mushrooms. So I'm going to link in the blog post to some resources for to some like more people who know what they're talking about and really go into like in depth on what some of the real benefits of mushrooms are because there are just a ton. Yeah. But on that same kind of note, somebody asked, what is the buzz about? This seems to be a super popular vegan health food trend. And they want to know if it's, uh, they also asked if it was like a superfood or what makes it a superfood. I don't even know what, it, what is a superfood. All right, first about the trends. One, I had no idea that there was even any kind of trend going on. I literally was like, uh, I have dried mushrooms and I want to put mushrooms into this dish without actually like having to rehydrate them and do all that. And so I, I was just like, what if I blitz them into a powder? So that's exactly what I did because we had our, our coffee grinder. Let's be honest though. It was really just more like you taking anything that you could and putting it into the coffee grinder and seeing like, like the will it blend thing, like will it grind, will it? <laughs> that's part of it. It was just your curiosity and you were like, oh, yeah. it worked. <laughs> so I had no idea about a trend of any kind going on in the world. I just literally had the thought, do this, do this, bing, bang, boom, and then I did it. Uh, as far as the superfood, I actually really don't like the phrase superfood because it's a marketing ploy in my opinion, but you know, that's beside the point. All right. Do you have any thoughts on mushroom coffees like Four Sigmatic? Uh, we have had one Four Sigmatic thing before and it was the matcha, I believe. Yes. Uh, and I didn't really care for it. Uh, but then again, I'm not a huge matcha fan unless it's like in something very sweet. And that stuff's expensive. Yeah, it's very expensive for what we try to do. Um, okay. Is mushroom powder safe to eat and how much of it is safe to eat, if so? Mushroom powder is safe to eat. Uh, you can pretty much eat a bunch of it. It's really not going to <laughs> affect you. Uh, yeah, so there's there's no real, real negative that I know of to eating mushroom powder other than the fact that you're eating like just powdered mushrooms. That being said, if you like overdose on mushroom powder, you can't sue us because don't listen to us on anything we say because we're not experts. That's my disclaimer, Jessica disclaimer. Thank you. Um, what types of mushrooms do you use to make mushroom powder and does it make any kind of difference? Uh, we usually use portobellas. Those are the ones that we, we use uh, to make most of our mushroom powders out there. Uh, but you like, there's 2000 varieties of edible mushrooms out there that you can do. And if you can get them dried, you can make a powder out of them. 
It's that simple. So there's just a, a bunch of different options that you possibly have. And as far as if it makes a difference, actually, this is the first time we've made any like other than yeah. the portobello. So we're interested to try these in some of the dishes and see if the flavors make a difference. Yes. Um, actually, I kind of want to smell them. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. See, I know what this one smells like. Mm. See, they actually smell good to me. See this, this okay, one. Okay, that's the porcini. That one just has this sort of earthy kind of smell. Very earthy, yes. The porcini, it's almost got like almost a coffee kind of smell to it. Like a coffee or almost tea kind of smell. Chanterelles. And the chanterelles. Also, whenever I hear porcini, I think of the uh, uh, Jawas from Star Wars, except they don't say porcini, this but I just like, like porcini. It sounds like nutty and kind of sweet smelling to me. Yes, very much. This almost smells like roasted peanuts. Uh, mm. and, uh, yeah, that's quite nice. Not to mention, I mean, look at the colors. Sniffing it's... mushrooms. Woo! Um, all right. So I imagine by those smells, I think that there could be differences in the flavor, but again, we'll experiment and we'll let you guys know. Yeah, exactly. Um, boop -a -doop -a -doo. Oh, do you avoid the mushrooms that are grown overseas? Uh, no. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a lot of mushrooms out there that are, you know, extremely delicious that you can only get in like Asian markets that you're not going to find at like a Target or even a Trader Joe's or something like that. I don't like, think Target sells any mushroom powder. Well, there you go. Or mushroom, uh, mushrooms. Dried, dried mushrooms. <laughs> but that's the thing is that like you can go to those Asian markets and you can find some really, really good mushrooms that we just don't normally eat around here. And I suggest that you do that. I'd suggest you do. Uh, is there a difference between the powder that you make yourself and pre-ground mushroom powder? Uh, no, not really. As far as I can tell... I mean, it's um, still just ground mushrooms. Yeah, it's just ground mushrooms. You can control how fine it is depending on what you do or, you know, if you want it to be a little bit chunkier, you can do that. But the price, I did do a little comparison on the price. So it, the brand that we buy is these uh, forest mushrooms that are from St. Joseph, Minnesota. And on their website, which I'll link in the blog below, um, if you bought like a 16 ounce bag of dehydrated portabella mushrooms, it would be $27. Now, if you bought a 16 ounce bag of pre-ground, so the same amount, same weight, but already ground mushroom powder in the portabella, it's $30. So, and that's going to give you a lot. Like, keep in mind this. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> this, these two right here consist of three bags each of the porcini One, so and the chanterelles. Ounces. Yes, so three brown. ounces total brown. For the portabella, this was not three ounces. This, this combined, combined amount was three ounces so it's of like portabella mushrooms. like more than mushrooms. twice the amount of, for some reason the portabella ones really like bulk up and like- No clue, yeah. but yes, you get a lot more bang for your buck as far as like the, the ounces to mushroom powder ratio. Well, but the ounces are the same. So I guess it's just a lot more air. That's why I said, well, it could be more so air, yeah. Hmm. Just could be lighter, hmm. fluffier. Yeah, I guess it's just, yeah. But anyway, um, so, you know, $3 difference, it's $3 more to me. I would buy it pre-ground just because of that, because the mushroom clouds and the headache of like making it and all that stuff and making the disastrous mess and all that that I'm really anxious about. <laughs> But the other flip side of it is if this is one ounce, double this amount, like if we bought a 16 ounce bag of, of mushroom powder, it would last us like five years. And I'm not yeah. sure if it would last that long. So that's the benefit I think to making it yourself. You can make like smaller quantities. You don't have to have like a huge bag. I'm sure you can buy smaller bags of mushroom powder, but anyway, um, yes. Keep it moving. Okay, keep it moving. Let's see. Mushroom powder. Oh, this is an interesting one. So why powder a mushroom when the whole food can be consumed? It's just preference for where you want to have uh, either more umami flavor without the mushroom texture uh, and, or where you want the mushroom texture and, and, and that in your recipe. It's really just a preference for that. Like I'm not going to chop up mushrooms and put it into my chili because I don't want that sort of squishy, uh, wet texture that a lot of mushrooms have when you cook them. You just want that like concentrated umami exactly. kind of flavor. Exactly. And also for me, 
I didn't like mushrooms at all. I could not stand mushrooms when we started eating this way. Now I will eat mushrooms, like whole mushrooms, like we'll do like stuffed mushrooms, which may be coming up soon in a video coming up very shortly. But um, I couldn't stand mushrooms. And so the only way Brian could get mushrooms in my diet was the powder. I didn't mind the taste. It was that squishy, like weird texture they have. And I just couldn't get past it. Finally, I got past that, but um, I think using the powder versus the whole thing can really help get it, get them in for people who just don't like that texture. Um, are dehydrated mushrooms considered cooked? Nope. They are generally freeze dried when they are packaged. And so they are not considered to be cooked when you buy them dried. Got it. Um, wait, so if they're not cooked, you said in another video that we did a while ago that you weren't supposed to eat mushrooms that yeah. are cooked and all this other, yeah. So, uh, generally, uh, raw mushrooms contain a type of toxin that it's, it's very, very light and it's something that the body really doesn't process out very well. And so the only way that it becomes ever a real problem is if you eat a lot of mushrooms every single day for a long period of time. If you just eat mushrooms occasionally, if you, you know, even if they're, they're raw or whatever, they're perfectly fine. But that toxin is destroyed when they are cooked. So that's why, you know, you generally want to cook your mushrooms. Hmm. Is it clean though? Do the mushrooms have to be washed before you make the powder? No. And in fact, if you wash them, it'll kind of ruin the integrity of the mushroom powder itself. It'll well, because then you'll have to dry them, them again. And yeah, yeah, then, yeah. Like, yeah. like that just becomes like, a whole other process. Them, dry them. They are <laughs> safe. The drying process kills anything that could possibly be on them. So yes, they are safe. All right. Can you use a food processor to make the mushroom powder? I don't know. Can we? The answer to that is, I don't think so, no. no. <laughs> At, least At least not for hours. Yeah, our, our food processor, we just kept grinding and it just like, the food processor got really hot and it, it wasn't making a powder at all. And then we ended up putting it in the Vitamix and like 10 seconds, boom. Um, how do you store it? Well, we store ours in these little mason jars. In a cool, dry place, they will last for up to a year. At yes. least that's what the packaging says. Uh, but in reality, they will last a lot longer than that. Dried mushrooms are extremely durable if you store them properly. Yeah, the next question was actually how long does it stay fresh? And like you said, on Good here it while. says these dried mushrooms may be stored in a cool, dry place for up to one year. After opening the bag, store the remainder contents in a sealed container. These are like, I think these are two cup. Yeah. Uh, little mason jars, the wide mouth ones, we'll link to these in the blog post below. We have these nice little like tight fitting plastic lids that we like to swap out instead of the regular like mason Metal jar ones, yeah. lids. But these work perfectly. You can just measure it, keep them in your cupboard, measure them out, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Okay. These questions are all about taste. Okay. How strong does the taste come through? Somebody said, they said, I don't like mushrooms. So that's the great thing about using mushroom powders in uh, like a recipe, like our chili or the burgers and stuff like that. The mushroom flavor doesn't really strongly come through, but the, um, the umami flavor gets pushed up even more and it just makes them taste even better and more savory and more meaty and like yeah. that kind of stuff. So it's really, really good for bumping up the umami flavor while not really having that deep mushroom flavor. Along those same lines, somebody asked, is it possible to like mushroom powder if you don't like mushrooms? And I would say yes, because I didn't like mushrooms at all, but I didn't ever mind when Brian put mushroom powder in dishes. Honestly, if I didn't know he put it in there, I probably wouldn't have even noticed, known that there were mushrooms in it at all. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, does it make everything too mushroomy? Does it taste like mushrooms? The, uh, there's a lot of questions about that topic. So I would say, even if you don't like mushrooms, don't be afraid to try it. I don't think it overwhelms, especially with the amounts that Brian uses in his recipes. So check out those recipes in the blog and try them out and then let us know. If you come back and you're like, nope, it still takes less mushrooms, let us know. Now, I love this question, but does it taste like dirt? Uh, it doesn't really taste like dirt. Um, it kind of has those earthy tones in the dried form. Uh, not so much when they are in their, their just straightforward raw form. Uh, but yeah, for the, for the most part though, they, they don't, they don't really taste I mean, like, if I just they taste, this they taste like... like dirt, but better dirt. All right. 
So the last set of questions is all about, about where we find it, buy it, prices and all that. So that's all my thing. Um, so where do you find dried mushrooms that don't cost a small fortune? Well, the port, that's why we like to use the portobello ones the most. The uh, one ounce bag of dried portobello mushrooms at our Whole Foods is $3.99. If you looked, if you watched our Whole Foods top 10 list, you will know that mushrooms were actually number one on that list for the thing, things we like to buy at Whole Foods. Um, so $3.99 for a one ounce bag of the dried portobello, which on the package it says yields approximately eight ounces when rehydrated. Somebody asked me to actually do a price comparison of mushrooms versus the powder, which you know I love a good price comparison and a good math equation. Um, I can buy, so I would consider the one ounce of dehydrated to be equivalent to an eight ounce package of mushrooms. Um, the eight ounce packages, I can buy at Aldi sometimes for like $1.29, $1.99, just depends. Aldi, you know, has really good prices on produce sometimes. So yeah, sometimes I can get them pretty cheap. And yeah, that is like two or three times cheaper than buying the dehydrated ones. But when you're talking about like $4 versus $1.50 or whatever, like, okay. You know, it's not something, it makes a lot, so it's not something that you need to buy all the time. Um, now, that being said, some of the ones at Whole Foods are like $19.99 for a one ounce bag if you get some of the fancier kinds. I know the Porcini and the Chanterelle were a little bit more expensive, um, but not too crazy, like, and they'll probably be more specialty ones that we use. Also, if I buy an eight ounce package of mushrooms at like a regular grocery store, not an Aldi, it's usually around like $2.50 to $3 anyway, so, it's not really that much more expensive. Also, a lot of people have been commenting that you can find uh, really cheap bags of dried mushrooms yes. at Asian markets and stuff. Yes. So uh, go check, check those, those places out, yeah. out and see if you can find some, some really good deals on stuff in your area. Also, people, a lot of people say they can't find dried mushrooms. Where can they order them from online? Well, the company Forest that we buy ours from, they have a whole website where you can order from. So I'll link that in the blog post. I'll also link to Amazon lists, you know, with, with different either pre-powdered mushrooms or dehydrated mushrooms that you can buy. There's all sorts of them on there. Um, if you... I look in your grocery store though a little bit more, like ask somebody maybe to help you because I've seen them all over. I've seen them, we have two local chains of grocery store, Deerberg's and Schnucks, uh, and I've seen them at both of those. Sometimes they're in the refrigerated section where the regular mushrooms are. Sometimes they're in the produce section. Sometimes they're in the bean aisle or some kind of thing. I think they're one of those products that they don't really know where to put. So they just get put wherever they fit. So ask and like do a little bit more digging because I have seen them at just regular grocery stores a lot. So um, yeah, but Whole Foods, our Whole Foods at least has them and it's a really, they have just a really good variety for us. I think- That's it. I think that's it. Woohoo! That's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It was a bit informative. Uh, you, we showed you a you know, practical demonstration on how we do it uh, around here in the Crocs kitchen. And hopefully you guys liked that one. But I think that we should probably just get to the close here. Oh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and click the bell notification that is right next to it so you get notified whenever we post a new video. Also, find us on social media. Specifically, we do the uh, Facebook and we do the Instagram quite a bit. Uh, and you can send us messages on there. We do greatly appreciate that. And <gasps> now, <gasps> new. What? We have Where? a P.O. Box. Yes, we do. The address for our P.O. Box, if you want to send us some quote unquote fan mail, which a lot of you guys have asked about sending us fan mail. We still think it's weird because we're like, wait, we have fans? What? But we think it's really cool. We actually got a really cool package from somebody the other day so if you want to send something to us we don't you know we're not like saying hey send us stuff but yeah. if you want to you want to send us a little note a card whatever you are free to do that at our p.o box which is posted in the description of this video yes uh also like and share the video if you want to do so it really does help us grow the channel quite a bit and check out our website because the blog post always has all kinds of more links and information yes, and all that does. stuff and i spend a lot of time doing it and i really appreciate those of you who visit it and you can find the amazon store on there as well where we sell a bunch of the stuff that we use in our kitchen uh but i think that's all i got that's definitely all i got we will see you next time on mushroom king and queen in the no. kitchen oh uh crocs in the kitchen Bye. Bye. Where's my fun guy? No, my fun guy.